Air power is the dominant strategic force. It's air power that lets you influence events and respond to events quickly. It's air power that lets you fight a war without putting hundreds of thousands of people on the ground. To date, Air Force F-15s have won more than 150 dogfights against enemy fighters without a single loss. And the Navy F-18 Hornet is widely recognized as the world's best carrier-based fighter bomber. But in the future, neither the F-15 nor the F-18 will be able to survive against deadly enemy anti-aircraft missiles. Surface-to-air missiles, or SAMs, are going to represent the biggest threat. Those very formidable systems developed in Russia or China will have to be taken out of action very quickly in any future conflict. The fighter of the future will need to be stealthy to slip past enemy radar. It must be able to take out anti-aircraft installations. And it must out-dogfight any enemy fighters that get in the way. That future fighter is already here. The F-22 Raptor. The air dominance fighter of the 21st century. Developed by Lockheed Martin, this advanced tactical fighter has been designed to be the first plane to cross enemy lines, clearing the way for all other forces. The F-22 is both an air-to-air -air fighter and an air-to-surface fighter, so it can drop precision weapons. That means it'll be able to go in early in a conflict, knock out all the air defenses that an enemy has, and also take out certain ground targets, and open the door for all the U.S. forces, whether they're ground vehicles or other aircraft, to come in and continue the fight. The development of the F-22 Raptor first began in 1985, when the Air Force requested proposals for an advanced tactical fighter jet to replace the F-15 air superiority fighter. Military planners feared that the F-15 would not be able to counter new air and ground threats on the horizon. The result was the creation of the F-22. The capability of the aircraft is a quantum leap above what exists right now, and it's going to take air power and revolutionize it into a, a whole new world. In the battles of the future, stealth will be critical for all new fighters to avoid being seen by enemy radar. Non-stealthy aircraft just will not survive in the uh, air battles of tomorrow. Stealth technology was created to counter advances in radar. Radar works by sending out radio waves and measuring the amount reflected back to determine the distance, speed, and course of an object. But stealth aircraft are designed with surfaces that deflect radio waves away, making them nearly invisible to radar. The world's first stealth production aircraft was the F-117 Nighthawk. The reason that airplane is faceted is a limitation of the computer technology at the time. It's easier to model a finite number of flat surfaces than it is a bunch of curved surfaces. And while the aircraft was a breakthrough at the time, the facets limited the plane aerodynamically. But now, thanks to more powerful computers, engineers can design aircraft that do not have to sacrifice aerodynamics for stealth. The FNA-22's aerodynamic slickness allows it to uh, have the lowest drag of almost any aircraft ever produced. The F-22's aerodynamic superiority, combined with its stealth and firepower, make it a far better adversary than any aircraft before it. The F-15, which the F-22 will replace, has been a very successful fighter, but it is not stealthy. The F-117, while stealthy, carries no air-to-air -air weapons and is not designed for air combat. It relies on stealth and mission planning to protect itself. But the F-22, on the other hand, is not only stealthy, but comes with a full complement of air-to-air -air and air-to-ground weapons. The 
primary ar armament is in weapons bays underneath the airplane where we carry six medium-range radar-guided missiles. By carrying the weapons internally, it preserves the stealthy shape of the plane. For closer infighting, the F-22 has short-range missiles and guns. Behind these two doors right here is the side weapons bay. This is where we carry heat-seeking missile. For close-in armament, the Raptor is equipped with the M61A2 cannon. The muzzle is hidden right behind this door right here. It's hidden because of the uh, stealth characteristics of the airplane. The cannon carries 480 rounds and is capable of shooting 100 rounds a second. The F-22's advanced weapons systems will make it a formidable interceptor, as will its unique ability to find enemy aircraft without revealing its own position. When other planes use their radar, they become visible to every other radar system in the area. But that's not the case with the F-22. Perhaps the highest tech part of the airplane is the radome itself. Not only does the radome have to be stealthy, but it has to be able to transmit and receive its own radar signals. How the F-22 radar achieves that remarkable feat is classified. But what is known is that the F-22 can see enemy aircraft at a distance while remaining invisible to them. The first time that the bad guys will really notice an F-22 in the area is when one of them blows up. Along with its advanced radar system, the F-22 is the first fighter to have super crews, the ability to travel faster than the speed of sound without using its afterburners. A jet's afterburners boost speed by pouring fuel directly into the hot blast of the engines, adding fiery extra thrust. But afterburners are also wasteful, consuming enormous amounts of fuel, dramatically affecting the range and duration of a plane's mission. But the F-22 doesn't have that problem. Without using afterburners, it can supercruise at an incredible one and a half times the speed of sound, over 1,000 miles per hour. This is all about our pilots being able to go fast, minimize the amount of time they are exposed to any threat, do the mission that we've sent them to do, turn around and come home safely. The F-22 is presently the only fighter in the world with supercruise. But it wouldn't be possible without a very unique set of engines. The goals for Pratt & Whitney were to provide a transformational engine that the Air Force needed, one that was stealthy, maintainable, and fast. The F-119 PW-100 was developed by Pratt & Whitney after years of research. It sets the new standard for jet engines. Along with its incredible supersonic ability, the F-119 incorporates thrust vectoring. Here we are at the rear end of an F-A-22 Raptor. First thing you'll notice are the nozzles for the F-119 engines. In flight, during a maneuvering dogfight, they actually move up and down and vector the thrust of the engine to provide maneuverability. It helps us turn inside any foe at maneuver at low or high speeds to outmaneuver another airplane or potentially an enemy weapon that's headed towards us. The F-22's stealth, supercruise, and vector thrusting are impressive breakthroughs, but its most outstanding feature may be its ability to nearly fly itself through advanced computerized controls. It relieves the pilot of all the duties gives the pilot total freedom to just look out engaged in the combat scenario. In addition to monitoring its own performance, the F-22 constantly gathers data on other aircraft in the combat area and presents the most important information to the pilot. We're going to have information passed to us from either unmanned vehicles or from offboard sensors so that we can integrate data and use that information for targeting. And it's the way that we are driving our forces in warfare. We are much more integrated with both other services and with other platforms, and the F-22 fits right into that concept. The F-22 Raptor's total package of avionics, stealth, supercruise, and thrust vectoring make it the most technologically advanced fighter today.
I've never been in an airplane that accelerates as fast, that's as agile, the ability to turn very sharply, and uh, it just brings a great combination of the, the speed, the stealth, and the avionics to the fight that nobody else is going to be able to touch. But there will be future competitors, like the Russian Sukhoi 37, which features thrust vectoring and a radical forward swept wing design. And the fifth generation MiG, the 1.22, which some have nicknamed the F-22 Ski. The Russians are still very active aircraft developers. They've got a variety of technologies that they're continuing to improve upon and that can be made available to our future enemies. And so that's why we have to stay on top of the technology that we are developing and make sure that it is able to take out anything that other countries develop. When you look at the adoption by China of the Su-27 and the fact that it'll probably be modernized and improved, uh, that brings up the need for more advanced fighter aircraft in the U.S. And that's one of the main reasons, I think, why the Air Force is so insistent on the need to have the F-22. In addition to Russia, other U.S. allies are producing advanced interceptors for export that are superior to the F-15, such as Sweden's JAS-39 Gripen. And France's new Rafael. Germany, Italy, and the UK have joined forces to create a Eurofighter, the Typhoon. If these planes fall into unfriendly hands, the US Air Force will need the F-22 to maintain their advantage. We are always going to go into war wanting to have that air dominance, and the F-22 is going to be the big boy on the block that can help us to do that. In future combat, the F-22 is to be joined by another stealthy aircraft, the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, the ground attack bomber of the future. Designed for the U.S. Air Force, Navy, Marines, and Britain's Royal Navy, the question is, will it work for every user? The rules of war have changed. Brute force has given way to high tech, and conventional weapons of the past will no longer be effective. In future battles, the F-22 will be the first fighter to cross enemy lines, surgically removing air and ground targets. Next in, the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, the attack bomber of the future. It will assume the air-to-ground attack role for the U.S. military. The F-35 can carry heavy weapons externally for maximum effect, but when a smaller payload is carried internally, it is nearly as stealthy as the vaunted F-117 Nighthawk. It has a significant amount of stealth capability to allow it to be used early on in, the, in a campaign, and it has a significant amount of weapons carrying and payload capability to be used at the later stages of campaign. The threat to the airplanes may not be as significant and require less stealth. The development of the F-35 was driven by the armed forces' desire to save costs by creating a ground attack bomber that would meet the needs of the Air Force, Navy, Marines, and Britain's Royal Navy. Airplanes are becoming very expensive these days, and we had to do something to get the cost of these airplanes back down to a reasonable level. The F-35 is expected to cost about $40 million.